Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing really well. If you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencils. So if that's of interest to you, then please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about stuff like that. So today I thought I'd do a new video like this. I've not done one for a while, so I'm feeling a bit rusty and I'm not able to get my words out properly. But yes, I'm gonna try. <laughs> so this weekend I'm doing a craft fair and it is on Saturday and it's at the Hodder Valley Agricultural sort of like country show. So I think selling wildlife artwork will probably hopefully go down well at that kind of event. So yeah, it's in Clitheroe in Lancashire. I've just been doing a bit of prep work for it. So I thought it'd be good to start the video now and just film like little bits throughout the week of me preparing for the craft fair. And I'm just ordering some more stock because I don't think I would have enough right now to take with me. So I've ordered some more cards and I've ordered a new bookmark design and I think that'll be enough. I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to take loads of stuff, but also my plan is from now on to do one craft fair every month for the rest of the year and hopefully next year as well. So I've got one booked for November already and then I need to find one for December soon. So I'll probably do a few in December because it's near Christmas time. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, but minimum one per month would be ideal. So I'm just going to order a lot of different cards, the ones that I think sell best and a few extra ones just so that I've got something new to take and something more suitable to the type of audience that will be there hopefully. So I'll just show you what I'm doing. I've just been going through all of my card designs and seeing what I'm low on, what I could do with ordering and I've made a little list of stuff to order. So I think I've decided not to go with the goldfinch and woodpecker just because they don't sell that well. So I'm a bit like, mm, do I really want to spend money on buying them if they don't even sell? Because I am in the process of moving out into my own place with my boyfriend. So I've got a lot of things to buy for that. And I don't really want to be spending loads on stock at the minute. Trying to go with the bare minimum, which might be a risk, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm definitely getting the Barn Owl, Tabby Cat, Stag, Hedgehog, Red Squirrel and Cow cards and my new bookmark design. So... This is the cow card. It's a Patreon tutorial that we did. If you've done it, you might recognise it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get some cards made out of them because it is an agricultural show and I think cows will do well. You never know. They might not, but only one way to find out. Just give my laptop a wipe because it was so dusty, but I can't decide whether to order any of these Harvest Mouse cards. I think it would be nice for autumn with it being like wheat and stuff. I don't know. I don't know whether to just give it a go. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm getting some Harvest Mouse cards instead of the stags because I do have eight stag cards left, which is enough for one little event, I think. So I'm going to give them a go, see how they sell. And if the stag cards sell out and these don't do very well, then I know for the next one to get more of the stag cards. But yeah, like I said, I'm sort of min limiting what I'm buying at the minute because I am moving house and I don't want to go crazy, but... Yeah, I'm going to give these a go and I've also got my bookmarks, so I've got enough to get on with for the day, I think. So just in case you were curious, this craft fair that I'm doing cost me £35 for a six foot table, which is quite cheap. Like some of the craft fairs at these country shows cost anywhere between like 100 and £200 for a six foot table, which is just madness. Some of them are like two day events, which is more reasonable for that kind of price but they are really expensive so as soon as I saw this one with £35 I was like yes I'm gonna try that one even if I don't do that well it doesn't matter so if you are starting out doing craft fairs and you're a bit like nervous and apprehensive about it like I was just go for some slightly cheaper events and see how you get on and then you could always branch out to the more like expensive bigger events another time but the problem is I've spoke to quite a few different artists that do like similar stuff to me and a lot of them said they don't they don't do that well at the bigger ones like the if you're not put in the right place or if people don't go past the area that your stand is in you might not do that well and you've spent all this money on all the stock on the table on like a marquee if you if you've got like a little separate one and you're not in the craft tent and yeah it just it does freak me out a bit that you could spend all that money and not get any return back for it so for now i'm sticking to the smaller craft fairs that 
don't get me as anxious because <laughs> I do get really anxious about doing crafters. It's just something that's a bit out of my comfort zone. So yeah. Um, another thing to be aware of is not all craft fairs include public liability insurance. So this one doesn't. So I've had to actually buy my own and I've gone with direct line and I think it was about 20 odd pound for the year. I don't know. Let me check. Okay, so for a full year of public liability insurance, it cost me £45.36 and I think I pay monthly. So it's like a few pound a month so it's worth it if you're thinking of doing a lot of craft fairs it's definitely worth getting some public liability insurance because it's a requirement at a lot of events and i think you just have to like take your little policy certificate to show that you've got it the last craft fair that i did it was included i could add it as like a little add-on i think it was like a fiver for the event so i didn't have to worry about it but this one it's not included and it's just handy to have for the whole year so this is why i want to do more craft fairs because i've bought this insurance for a year i might as well use it so one a month i think would be reasonable so yes that is just something to be aware of if you're doing craft fairs and stuff like that so yeah i think that's all i'm gonna do for today in regards to the craft fair prep i'm gonna get on with some commissions and stuff so i'll speak to you next time i am doing more crafty stuff Hello everyone, I just thought I'd pop on today and tell you about something really stupid that I did which has caused me to have a mild panic. So yeah, when I was ordering my cards and stuff on printed.com, because the website's changed and it's a bit more like modern, it sort of like threw me off a little bit and I didn't order my envelopes and my compostable sleeves that I use for the greeting cards. So I didn't realise till later on that evening and I was like, wait, I don't remember ordering any envelopes or anything like that. So I went to check my order and I was like, oh no, I've not ordered any. And by this point, it was Monday night, so I only had four days to sort this out. So I rang them on Tuesday and they said they couldn't change my order, they couldn't amend it because it had already been like processed and stuff. So I've had to order envelopes separately. And then I've also had to order the compostable sleeves separately. So I've paid three lots of delivery next day, which has worked out probably like £18 in total, which is just like, Ugh. you know, when you get really annoyed at yourself and you're like, why did you do something so stupid? If I'd have just taken the time to look at it a bit more, I would have saved myself probably about £12. So anyway, these things happen and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will come in time. I've literally just had a delivery of all the cards and stuff, so I'll show you what they look like. So these are my little bow and owl bookmarks that the exact same design on both sides. And I just put a little like circle there so that I know where to put a little hole punch in it. So I'll put a little bit of ribbon in the top, use the same one that I use for my hair bookmarks. And now we have two bookmark designs. By the way, excuse my hair, I feel like it looks really scruffy, but I just couldn't be bothered doing anything with it today. But this is the Barn Owl card. It's come out a lot darker than the bookmark, which is weird. I don't know if the colours are fully accurate on that, but ain't nobody got time to mess around <laughs> getting them redone. I think they look fine. This is the cow card. I'm really happy with how that came out. Again, that looks quite dark, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter for a card. I've just put my hair in a bubble because I feel like it would look really weird on that video. But uh, yeah, this is the Harvest Mouse card. I just thought that'd be nice for autumn with it being like a little bit of wheat and stuff. So three new designs, one new bookmark. I think that is good going for this weekend. So I'll also show you some frames that I've ordered just to show what they'd look like in a frame more than anything, a bit of inspiration. I will be, be um, selling them as well, but we'll see, we'll see. I don't, I don't usually sell framed prints, so I'm not sure how it'll go. So this is a frame that I'm going to use. I've got some little mounts, some 8 by 8 inch mounts to put these little cards into to make like a an art print out of the cards because they are acid free. You can actually do that. So that's sort of the angle that I'm going down now. But yeah, I just thought it'd be good to display a couple while I'm there. But yeah, I'm feeling very like... Ugh. I don't know, you know you've got like a million and one things to do and you don't even know where to begin. That's how I feel right now. But I'm just gonna do what I can do. That's all you can do really, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so just to show you, these are the little mount boards that I've had made by my local framers. You probably buy stuff like this online, but I never have before, so I can't recommend like an online company. I literally just go down to the little local shop in my town and she makes them for me. This is what the print version will look like. 
So like I said, it's just a greeting card that's been mounted. And then once that's in a frame, that'll look really cute. So this is just another example of how the finished like mounted card will look in a frame. So these are just one of the cheapest uh, frame options that I found just to try them out, see how they go. They had some really nice sage green ones and I thought I'd love them, but for some reason they were more expensive even though it was the same style. But yeah, maybe one day, but for now I'm happy with just these like neutral sort of creamy beigey coloured ones. But yeah, I think I'm feeling a bit better. I feel a lot better when the compostable sleeves arrive. This week we have had the weirdest weather. Like there's just random thunderstorms that just come out of nowhere and they like disappear as quickly as they appeared. It's weird, what's going on? I really hope the weather isn't like this on Saturday because all this will have been for nothing. <laughs> right, I am just mounting this card. Definitely going with the hedgehog. I just don't really know what else to go with. Wow, the thunder. Oh, did you hear that? I quite like it when you're inside and it's thundering, but I just, I'm just really worried that this weekend's going to be like stormy. <laughs> oh well, if it is, it is. You can't really do anything about it. That's like what you have to expect could happen when you do events and craft fairs and stuff. So I'm just putting on a little bit of tape so that it sticks to the mount. Not too much though in case anyone wants to change it, although I don't see why you would buy a mounted card to change the mount. Oh wow, there's thunder. This is the main reason I do not enjoy selling frames. The faff of getting all these little dusty bits out. Because even when they're brand new, they have little dusty bits in. Oh, it's just like the bane of my life getting these out. I couldn't do loads and loads of frames because this would just drive me insane. I think that's everything. You look at it in a different light and then you're like, oh god no, there's more stuff there. But yeah, if you're going to sell stuff in frames, I think if you can find a frame that's got glass in it rather than like plastic, they do look a bit better and you can get them for a good price. So have a look around and see if you can find one that's got glass rather than acrylic or whatever it is that they use. I also hate these little bits. Oh no, I didn't put them, oh, I didn't put them back on. I just find them really faffy, but I think it's worth giving a bit of inspiration. The moment of truth. Yay! There we go. I think that looks really cute. Those little bits are on the front, not inside, thankfully. But yeah, I think it'll just be enough to showcase what they look like as little prints. So I'm happy with that. Right, just looking at them side by side, I think I am going to go with the little mouse that I've got. Because I think it would just be really cute. I think they look nice together. Little like autumn -y sort of style designs. So yeah, I think the colours like torn really well with the frame too. This is the sort of stuff that you have to think about, like how it looks as a whole and not just, oh, that'll do, you know. So that's how they both look together. I'm really, really happy with these. I'm a bit gutted I didn't, I didn't get any more, to be honest, but do you know what? I'm just experimenting. I'm going to see how it goes. And if it goes well, I'll get a lot more for my next craft fair. So yeah, look at the absolute chaos that is my desk right now. This is just like a reflection of my mind at the minute. <laughs> Chaotic. But yeah, I'm happy with those. I'm, I think I actually like this one best. Let me know which one you like better. Hello, it is now Thursday and I'm just up at the new house. I had to wait in for the fridge to come. So now I think what I'm going to do, I need to get some change for this craft fair. So I'm going to go into town in Garstang and see if I can get some from the post office. They wouldn't let me last time, so I don't think they will this time. But Nat West uh, did give me some, but I don't have a Nat West bank account, so I had to give them cash and then they swapped it for some change. But I'm just thinking, I feel like that was a one-off because the girl were really nice last time. I don't know if they'll do that again. But I do have a backup plan if they don't let me have any change. So 
If they don't, I think what I'll do is <laughs> go to Blackpool and go to the arcade because you can get literally like pound coins, 50p's and stuff by putting some notes in the little machine. So <laughs> worst come to worst, I might have to have a night in Blackpool, but <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, the reason it's a bit tricky is because I have a Starling business bank account and they don't really have any banks that you can go to and ask for change. So I think they say that you're supposed to go to the post office, but the one in Garstang don't let you have change. So I'm not going to go driving around all the different post offices and seeing if they'll let me. So yeah, I think worst comes to worst, I probably will just <laughs> go to the arcade or something. Okay, post office number one, I just realised there's two, so I'm going to try this one first and we'll see how it goes. Can't believe it, they actually gave it me. So I got £10 in 50p's and 30 quid in quids. 30 quid in quids, 30 pound in pound coins, so... Uh, yes, that's good. Oh my god, what a relief. They don't let me in the other one, so now I know that I can come to this one, which is just down the road. So yes, I'm going to go and draw some £10 notes out from the cash machine, I think, and then that'll be enough. By the way, if you're depositing your change, your cash, into your bank account through the post office, they really like you to put the change in these bags because it takes them forever to count it otherwise. I didn't have any last time and I did that and they weren't too happy about it. So yeah, they're quite important if you want to put the change back in your bank account. I also need to charge my sum up card machine. I really recommend these if you haven't got a card machine already. I think it was like £19 and I just link it up to an app on my phone and I can take payments. So yeah, definitely get a card machine if you don't have one because most people now don't like to pay in cash anyway. So it's good to have both options. I've also got this little like uh, letter board that I think I'm going to use for my price list. So last time I was faffing around with little price stickers for everything. I don't want to do that this time. I've only got four different types of products, so if I just do like a little price list on here, I'm hoping that'll be a better way to do it. So I'm going to have a play around with these letters. Right, here we go. So I've got cards 250, bookmarks £3, mini prints 12, larger prints individually priced. So I don't have enough uh, little dots for in between the numbers and stuff. So yeah, and plus they already have prices on from last time because I've not bought any new ones. I might have a play around with the layout and like shift it down a bit, but for now that'll do. It took me absolutely ages, like wow, that was so faffy. <sighs> I just finished filming the heron tutorial that I've been doing for Patreon, the last part. That took me about three hours to just sit down and film it all. But anyway, I'll show you that in another video. I think I'm going to do like a normal studio vlog next week. So I shall reveal all in that vlog. I'm really hot. <laughs> I was concentrating that much that I've got really hot. But anyway, now it's four o'clock. It's Thursday evening and I'm just going to spend some time mounting some cards. So now is the question of which cards do I mount? I've got eight mounts. This is a problem, like narrowing, narrowing down your designs to just a few of your bestsellers. What sells well on Etsy might not necessarily sell well at the craft fair. So, hmm, gonna have a think. Also, the best news, my compostable sleeves came and now I can get on with packing my cards later on. So, oh, I'm so happy. The show can go on and I can actually present my cards the way that I like to present them. So, yeah, it only cost me an extra tenner in delivery or whatever it were, but it was worth it. Otherwise, I would have had nothing to sell, really. I would have had a very small selection of cards. So, yeah, it had to be done. There we go. I've wrapped all of these prints. That was, wow, that took me a long time. I think if I do these again, if they do well, I'll probably get some sleeves because I've had to literally, like, hand cut and like fold all these things so sleeves would be a lot easier but for now I don't know if they're gonna do well so it's not worth investing in like a lot of sleeves so yeah happy with these one thing down stamping some bags because I think it'd be nice to have a little bit of branding on if somebody buys something gets a bag and then thinks oh what what was that um business that I bought from they'll know so yeah it's very expensive to buy branded bags so this is a good hack if you want to put your logo on a bag 
just buy a little stamp. I got mine from Get Stamped, I think, on Etsy. It's a bit hard to like get it perfect, as you can see, I messed that one up, but yeah, they're very handy to have. I like <laughs> putting my logo on everything. I'm at my new house now where I'm going to be staying for the night and I'm going to get on with packing these greeting cards, I think. And I'm going to watch some TV and have a bit of a chill while I do it, so yes. Hello everyone, it's now Friday so it's the day before the craft fair. So today I'm just getting like any last minute bits done. I've ordered a new cash box because I was using my dad's before and it didn't have one of those like little shelves for coins to go in to like separate everything. So I just found it a bit like ugh, faffy trying to get all the coins out of the big like one, um, one, one, con one space. I don't know how to describe it, I'll show you. So this is the money box that I've got. Got it from Amazon, I think it was like 9 99 And as you can see, it's got a little um, little shelf insert here, which has got like dividers for coins. And then underneath you can put your notes. So yeah, I think that'll just be a bit more efficient like looking for the change and stuff in there. So it was worth doing. I'm gonna be doing more of these, so. Anything that makes your life easier. I managed to get all of my cards packed last night. It took me hours. I, did ke I kept taking breaks, but yeah, that was a very long winded process. And oh, I actually need to put the ribbons on them. I think what I'm gonna do now is get on with some more like stamping of bags and stuff, just to make sure that I have more than I probably need. And then I'm gonna put the ribbons on the bookmarks, make sure that I've got everything ready. And then I'm going to do the fun bit. I'm going to do a trial run of the like table set up to see what it looks like because it will be a bit different to last time um, in the last vlog that I did for my craft fair. So yeah, I'm going to have an experiment, see how it's looking and make it look all pretty. Okay, so now for the fun bit, I'm going to lay everything out. This table isn't the right size, but it'll do. It's not too dissimilar. Um, that's a good thing to point out as well. Make sure you find out if you've got a table provided or if you have to bring it on. Thankfully, they provide it at this one and two chairs. So that's good. That's another thing to remember. Take chairs if they don't provide them because you end up wanting to sit down at some point and we didn't have any last time. We were like, oh, I really wish I'd have brought chairs. Okay, here we go. This is my trial run. It's a bit chaotic because this table isn't as wide as the table that I'll actually have. But individually, I really like everything. I even like this little price list. I think that looks good, especially with that in front of it. I think it all looks like um, balanced now. But yeah, I'll show you where everything's from. Um, this is from Hobbycraft, this easel. Got that from printed.com, I think. This I got from a car boot. Uh, they're my little mounted cards. That's from the car boot as well. My bookmarks. Just got these from a local flower shop, but you could just literally go out on a walk and find them yourself. Um, my dad made me this. My dad made me this, which I love. And they're just some flowers that I've got. I don't know where I'll put them, but I'll find a place for them. And 
I've got my little sum up card machine thing and I think I might put my prints on like the flat bit like this the flat bit of the table because I don't think I'm gonna fit this big box ignore the mess this big box I don't think I'll fit that on the table but I'll take it with me you never know I might be able to get it on but yeah something like this would be fine I think just as long as you can see me <laughs> behind the stall so yeah I think I'll take a picture of this and do something similar tomorrow I'm also going to take two of these which I got on holiday they're for putting your towel on your sunbed and it like clamps on and keeps it in place and I'm going to put it on the table at the back to like keep my uh my tablecloth on like that just so it doesn't get in the way and annoy me so yeah just a little tip if you have a tablecloth I've just been round to my friend Rachel's house to borrow a trolley off her I haven't bought myself one yet so she did mention that she used a trolley at a festival oh hello Ralph <laughs> um the other week so she's let me borrow it for the weekend and then I'll probably get my own next time but for now this is very handy Okay, now I'm going to clean up this absolute mess. So before, right, so that is everything packed up and ready. I'm going to take two of these just in case. I have got two. I don't know if it will look too much on the stall, but if I don't take it and then think, God, I wish I brought that, I'll regret it. So I'm going to take that with me and then got all my cards, all my like tablecloth and signage and stuff and yeah all my baskets and whatnot so just be aware that whatever you take you have to carry it or you can use it on a trolley but you have to lift it all out and this stuff is so heavy like these crates those wooden uh, stands are quite heavy because it is just like solid wood so just be aware of that um you can probably get stuff that's a bit lighter that's like designed for cafes and whatnot but I just like the way these look, they look really rustic and that sort of goes with my branding and stuff. But yeah, it's fine. I've got help. Scott, my boyfriend's going to help me tomorrow. So it's not like I'm doing it on my own, but I think if I was doing it on my own, I would struggle with all this stuff. So yeah, that is all done. We're going to have a Chinese now and just chill for the evening. Today is Tuesday and I'm just up in the new house waiting for the bed to arrive so I thought I'd bring some work to do while I'm here and just chat to you about how the craft fair went. So I'm just doing um, the line drawing for the turtle for Patreon. So overall I would say that it went well. It was definitely worth doing. I'll just run through like the good and bad things about it. So the good thing was I didn't actually need the trolley in the end because we could park literally right behind the craft tent to unload stuff. So that was good, but you just never know what it's going to be like, like what the setup will be. So it's worth taking stuff like that just in case. But yeah, it was quite like a busy place, which surprised me. It was busier than I thought it would be. But there were some really slow moments in the craft tent, like because it was an ag agricultural fair, they had like a... Um, cow shows and stuff outside so they had like best cow fancy dress and all sorts of different like bits of entertainment so when that were going on it was quite quiet in the craft tent because obviously people haven't gone just to go shopping they've gone for like a day out to go and watch these little um competitions and stuff so yeah the shopping is a bit of like a side a sideline part of the day so yeah it was a bit slow at times and unfortunately because we were literally in the middle of a field on a, on a farm the signal was terrible so i didn't have any phone signal whatsoever thankfully i managed to connect to a random wi-fi 
um, that they had. I think it was part of the actual like show. I think they had Wi-Fi and I could only get it in one spot, like across on the other uh, stall at the other side. So whenever I had a card payment, I had to, <laughs> to take people across there, which wasn't ideal, but at least I could actually take payments. But thankfully a lot of people did have cash, but some people didn't. So it was a bit hard work. But yeah, apart from that, it went pretty smoothly. Um, something funny that happened, a dog weed on my stall, on my tablecloth, so that was nice. They didn't even notice either, the people whose dog it were. They were stood right in front of my stall having a chin wag for about 20 minutes and the dog put their leg up, had a little wee, they didn't notice. And people didn't come up to my stall because they were like blocking it, so we actually had to ask them if they could move on and just like stand to the side because it was um, stopping people from coming and having a look. So these are just things that might happen. Um, I did notice that there were a lot of people just having a look around, which is like to be expected. Like not everyone that was interested in probably buying anything. Um, but a lot of people that were looking around during the day ended up coming back just before it closed, before it finished, to buy something because they didn't want to carry it around all day. So that's something to consider too, like don't just pack up and get off as soon as possible. If there's still people looking around, the chances are they might actually want to buy something at the end of the day when they've got like a bit of money left. Um, and a lot of people had packed up and gone at this point as well. So it was definitely worth just sticking around a bit longer and um, getting the last few sales in because it actually probably was my busiest time of the day right at the end. So yeah, that's just worth noting. I didn't sell any prints at this event. I sold a lot of cards, no prints, no um, framed prints, nothing like that. But I think it did provide like a bit of inspiration for people who said like, oh, I think I'm gonna use this as like, a print and put it on my wall. So if it sells more cards, then it's worth having. Another thing to point out, even though I had a sign that said, I'm a colored pencil artist, these are all like colored pencil drawings. And I had that part of colored pencils. It's still like, people didn't realize that they were actually drawings. They just thought they were like nice pictures. So I think next time to make it super, super obvious and to like draw people in a bit, I am gonna take a drawing and do it while I'm there. So for the next event, I've actually contacted them and said, can I add a little bit of extra space onto the end of my stall? And I'll bring a little table, a drawing board, and I'll just get on with some drawing while I'm there. And hopefully that'll stop anyone that feels a bit awkward from like not wanting to come up. They might just come and watch for a bit and that's sort of like a bit of an icebreaker and it'll just be really, oh, sorry, my phone just rang, so I don't know what I was saying, but yeah, it'll just be like really obvious that I've drawn them myself, like they're all hand drawn. And yeah, I think it'll just create a little bit more interest on the stall. So yes, the only thing with that is I will always have to have somebody there to do like the processing the sales and stuff. So yeah, that's something to, Think about it. I thought the bed had arrived then. Um, next time, I think I'll also put both of my card stands up and have like double the amount of cards because I realised at the end that I hadn't put the uh, hedgehog card out and I was like, that's my best seller, why didn't I do that? So I'm really annoyed at myself for that. I don't know how I managed to miss it, but I couldn't have all the designs out because there was only like so much space. So yeah, next time I'll definitely be putting both out. And to be honest, in future, I might end up like going with a slightly bigger stall, like going with like a eight foot stall or I don't know. I'll have to have a look at what the prices and stuff are. But yeah, I don't think it's quite big enough for the amount of stuff that I'd like to display on a six foot stall. But yeah, overall, it was well worth going. I had a lot of commission interest, like every other person that came past had a dog. There were so many Springer Spaniels, which is like one of my favorite dogs to draw. I've got a lot of Springer Spaniel um, designs or like on my business card, I've got Finlay the Springer. And so that uh, like created a lot of interest for 
commissions. I've had a few emails and stuff actually. So I think it's good to see these craft stalls as like a bit of a like marketing or networking opportunity, a chance to like meet people that would never know about you otherwise because not everyone's like on the internet, not everyone's on Instagram and Facebook and that's not the only way to find people. So it's worth doing, even if just for the chance of getting some commissions after it. And then anything that I sell is a bonus. So I think that's just the way that I'm gonna see these craft fairs from now on. But yeah, overall I made about a hundred pound profit, give or take, so well worth doing. I think I'll probably do it again next year, but just take, like I said, a drawing stand and whatnot. So yeah, the next one that I'm doing is the Brock Holes one in October. I kept saying November before, but it's not, it's October. So yeah, I'll probably do another vlog. I quite like documenting it and seeing like how I grow each time and what I do better and stuff. So yeah, I hope this video has been helpful to you if you're thinking of getting into craft fairs and make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and I will hopefully see you in the next one. So bye for now.